Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you to the world's largest hotel, casino, and theme park, the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, Nevada. We have a tremendous night of action coming away, and it's all brought to you by Don King Productions and the MGM Grand, along with Corona Beer. At this time, we present one of our featured attractions of the evening, a WBC light heavyweight special attraction that is scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. Introducing to you the judges at ringside appointed for this bout. Alfred Asaro, Dombi Shirley, and Tamatsu Tomihara. Presenting the referee in charge to give instructions after the introductions, Joe Cortez. All right, fans, here we go. Introducing to you first on my left, fighting out of the blue corner. He is wearing red trunks with white lettering, coming from Brooklyn, New York, by way of Kingston, Jamaica. His weight, 175 pounds, and his record, 45 wins, two losses, one draw with 34 wins coming by way of knockout. Introducing the three-time world champion and current WBC number two ranked light heavyweight in the world. Please welcome the body snatcher, Mike Nicolo. And his opponent across the ring on my right, fighting out of the red corner. He enters the ring wearing black trunks and fighting out of Mobile, Alabama. He weighed in at a ready 174 pounds and his record 29 wins, two losses with 23 of his wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome the WBC number one ranked light heavyweight contender known as Kid Galahad. Joe Cortez now to give instructions. All right, Randall. All right, Mike. All right, gentlemen, we went over these rules in the dressing room. I want a good, clean fight. Shake hands. Good luck to both of you. Randall Yonker, who says, with all the confusion over his opponent, I got scared. I thought I was fighting Tanya Harding instead of uh, Jeff Harding. Good sense of humor. Mike McCallum says he plans to win this for the older generation. Always an engaging and personable guy. Here we go. Round one scheduled for 12. McCallum, the supposed 37-year-old, gets a genuine kick out of his elder statesman status. Sort of the Jack Benny of boxing, I guess you could call him, because uh, where it is, he is actually closer to 40, if not beyond 40. Well, I'll tell you what, if he's going to win this title for some of the elder statesmen, i got a funny feeling I apply. <laughs> <laughs> You're only 32. And Mike has got a little bit of a spare tire there, Bobby. He's not the, in that real razor-sharp shape that he likes to be in. So you, you can see that he took this on the slope. Yes, he was training, but maybe not for this level of position. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Ferdy. I think that they told me he was training for a bout on the undercard here tonight, but that they were expecting, a, you know, an easier fight, something to tune him up toward a march to a title fight. And certainly the conditioning factor, big difference. Yonker told us he thinks McCallum is better technically, but not condition-wise. There's a right hand. Mike McCallum, McCallum, even though he's advancing in years, says he's still the man. Tonight is wants to be his third world title shot, but the interim tag has been taken away, so it's just a regular light heavyweight bout. McCallum, of course, uh, won titles earlier in his career, 154 and 160. He weighs 175 tonight. Look in by McCallum. Yonker said he wanted to apply some pressure early and test McCallum, make him use a lot of energy because of his age, but he's not really forcing the fight right now. Mike McCallum's taking control, setting the pace, and this is Mike McCallum's type of fight. Yeah, if he doesn't do anything better than this, he's in all kind of trouble because he's letting McCallum punch, and he's getting through it, and those punches hurt when Mike McCallum throws it. Yonker on his side is not doing it. He's not pressuring him. The opposite of what he said he was going to do. McCallum's always been a great ring technician and a good thinker. And the only way for Yonker to do is to get him out of that, not give him that time to set, think, and work what he wants. And right now, Yonker's not doing what he said he was going to do. 
Loves to go to the body relentlessly. That's the nickname, Body Snatcher. And you show an example of it right there. Joe Cortez cautioning Randall Yonker not to hold the head down. Well, that was one of those days where he, he got two resounding shots, one to the body, one to the head, and he got warned for holding one to the head. Nothing was going his way tonight. Eddie Futch, McCallum's octogenarian trainer, says Mike's legs are still good. He still has all the skills. He's still a young man physically, and he's providing an illustration here against the younger Yonker. I can't understand Yonker's strategy other than maybe trying to get Mike to punch himself out a little bit early and hope that that age will really kick in somewhere soon. But he's taking a lot of punishments. Yonker says, you're not hurting me. Those, those shots hurt. When Mike McCallum punches to the body, they hurt. on Yonker, I think. I, a bit of frozenness. Let's go to the red corner and, and listen to that. Here's his body snatching that talk about and nobody in boxing has ever been better nicknamed than McCallum. He knows how to go to that body. There it is. There's that shot to the side, and that'll be thumping in there all night, and that will take the legs away from young Randall Yonker unless he changes his mind. In the corner there, there, you have heard him. The former champion, Greg Page, saying, the heck with that, go in there and fight him. He used a little stronger words, but yeah. here you see, again, <laughs> McCallum's getting to tear him up. He's measuring him, he's digging, and this is not Yonker's fight. This is somewhat like the fight we saw last week in London where Wharton came out and was frozen for the first couple and uh, let Ben uh, have his way before he ever gets started. So it's round two, scheduled for 12. Mike McCallum pretty much having his way in the uh, first round. Body throw since 1981. A late fill-in, but a 9-1 to one favorite. Not uncommon in the fight game. Was on the card originally, but not to fight Yonker. Well, Yonker, told, Yonker told me yesterday when we interviewed him, he said a lot of people have compared him to me in the way he fights. And I'd like him to do a little more offensively if he wants to keep that comparison intact. Well, I don't see anything to compare you to. Oh, oh, from what I see, I don't see any comparison. I'll take that as a compliment, Purdy. It is a compliment, but it's a realistic one. Nice body shot. Bob, Bobby, if he does that two or three times, he's going to get his head taken off. It was a nice body shot, but, but he, he hung with it. Right? He let it hang. You know, it, it, I may be out of line, but Yonker's looking a little bit tired, and he's just loading up on one big shot. Maybe some of those body shots took a little more steam out in the first round than he anticipated it could. Well, certainly, it, it's a mistake to sit in the corner and let McCallum be off with his old legs. That's what he wants. He doesn't want to dance all over the place. He wants you to sit still and let him in, hit you. He'll hit you all night long. McCallum with that shotgun jab. Uppercut. Answered by Randall Yonker, but it's one and done for Yonker. You see how casually he puts in that jab to, to the midsection? Not, not many people can jab in the mid midsection that casually and still be effective. And he just does it like he's, oh, here's nothing. Bop, and there it is right in the stomach. What Yonker's doing, too, is letting McCallum maximize his efficiency with that reach advantage. He's not cutting off, cutting in, from stepping to the side, working around any of it, or coming up through the middle. He's just letting himself be tagged with that jab time and time again. How often we see guys stand right in front of him and not give angles and not look. Here he's standing in front of one of the most dangerous body punches in boxing, and he's letting him punch there. The experienced Mike McCallum only losses to Symbol Conovey in 88, James Tony in 92. He struggled to keep his weight down recently, so he's happy to be at light heavyweight now, 175. Working the jab, looking to set up the right, there it is, McCallum. And you know, if Yonker's gonna press Mike and test his age, and we all know that Mike is somewhere between 37 and uh, 137, because sometimes people tell me they know when he's young, he's 42, he's 43, he's 41, he's, it doesn't matter. He's fighting like a young pro, and he's doing the job, and Yonker's not pressing him and pushing him and test that age. Well, that's what Eddie Futz says. He says he still has the legs. He's still a young man physically. He does show a little pudge around the stomach, though. Final seconds of round two. 
There is no pudge in the punches of Mike McCallum. With Chris, they're right on the money, and he's doing what he wants to do. Championship fight coming up here at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. It'll be the WBC Middleweight Championship featuring this young man, Gerald McClellan, who's fighting out of Detroit, originally from Freeport, Illinois, a member of the famous Kronk team of Emmanuel Stewart. He'll be taking on Gilbert Baptist. That's coming up later on this edition of Showtime Championship Boxing. <laughs> So here at the house that Barbara Streisand built, the highly publicized New Year's you him out the concert. Too, Mike. Here's right. McKellen. You put him right in the corner, then you let him walk right out of the corner. All right. Okay. Keep it personal. All right. Come on, let him go now. All right. Don't let him leave. Don't let him leave. Come on. And it is round number three. A lot of experience in that McCallum corner. And, and let me tell you, the venerable Eddie Futch, one of the most respected men in boxing, and certainly one of the classiest, through all of the time, he, as a young man, he was classy, as an old man, he's super classy. And you'll notice the crunch, the drastic contrast to the corners, much like my corner with Tommy Park. Very calm, quiet, specifically controlled. The other corner, one guy's yelling one thing, the other guy's saying, don't worry about that. Well, Greg Page is the heavyweight in the corner of Randall Yonk, a very vocal and animated. That's because he's never worked corners, and that's uh, not, it, it doesn't help you to have an next fighter or a fighter in the corner if he doesn't train and doesn't know how to train. Uh, I think the word that describes the difference between those two corners is professional. Eddie is a professional, commands respect in the corner. Randall Yonker taking some punishment here. Good combination by McCallum. Again, cautioning Randall Yonker. Yeah, Joe Cortez doing a good job. He doesn't have much of a job to do here. It's all Yonker holding the head or trying to hit the, a little bit low. Cortez doing a good job. He's staying out of the way, letting him fight. He's an old pro. Many championship fights. here. Uh, they just exchanged low blows. Cortez didn't say anything to either one. They sort of evened up. Randall Yonker was stopped on the 10th by Michael Nunn. Yonker tells us he went to school against Nunn. Had to deal with the speed of Nunn. So he says, I'm ready for anything. Really nifty jab there by McCallum. Then he goes to the body with the right. And then he ducks under a punch. I mean, how, how much better can you be than that? <laughs> he didn't duck under that one. <laughs> Yonker hit the top of his head with a good hook. <laughs> Yonker told us the next fight after he lost to none, he avenged the loss to Paul Moyote, so he said he didn't lose any confidence. He is a confident young man. Good short left hand there by Randall Yonker. Maybe starting to get a little unfrozen now. Yeah, he is. He is starting. Now, there, there's the first, first good combination by Randall Yonker. First good, solid combination. And Yonker continues to impress here in round three. He's got to get mad. He's got to get into this fight. He gave him too much respect for those first two rounds. Blew him. Clean round, says Joe Cortez. Oh, good hook. thumping left hook by Randall Yonker. And a thumping hook back by Mike McCallum. Here on, guys. Here on. Come on, here on. You guys are giving us a very good round here. Both fighters giving it their all this round. Final seconds, round three. Terrific exchanges here in the third. Backing him up, don't let him come to you. Yeah. When he comes to you, he gets he gets shots off. Come over here. You watch him do it. You watch him do it. Keep baiting that dab, picking that dab, backing him up, keep taking up the slack. Let's watch Jonker when he finally gets unfrozen here and he starts to punch. Look at this combination he's putting together. Those are hard punches. They're well directed and they landed well. He did that several times in that round. He almost pulled that round out. 
But McCallum comes back. Look at this workman like right hand right above it. Another one right above it. That was high on the forehead. Had that landed right, it might have had another effect. You, you can't say enough about the way McCallum is fighting. And, and, and right now, Randall Yonker is coming back to make a fight of this. That was almost an even round. Round four, light heavyweight scheduled for 12. Originally, Yonker was to face Australian Jeff Harding for the light heavyweight championship, but Harding had to drop out because of a cut over the eye during training. So now Yonker has to answer the 37-year-old veteran, Mike McCallum, former two-time world champion. Can you imagine Mike McCallum as a substitute for Hardy? I mean, I'd rather have Hardy and fight for the title. And here instead, you got a really tough old pro, hard to beat, and nothing at stake. Yeah, Yonker said, I trained for a tough, durable fight for Jeff Hardy. So he says, I'm ready for Mike McCallum as a result. Good counter, left hook there by Randall Yonker. Randall starting to use his speed. As a younger man, he should have better reflexes and faster speed. He just showed it then with a hook. But basically what Eddie Fight said is right. As long as you got him going back, he's not punching him. He starts coming forward, he gets brave on you, so it's back to you first. It was mostly, if not all, McCallum over the first two. Then Younger answered back in the third. Terrific third round. And now quite even here in the fourth. And you can see exactly Eddie Futch's wisdom. He said, as long as you're punching and coming forward, Randall is not punching. He's covering up. You, you just saw a perfect example of that for about 30 seconds. Now, here is a warning. 30 points will be taken away, he said. Joe Cortez, if you keep on holding and if you keep on hitting low, we will take points away. That was a low blow inflicted by McCallum. I think both men are hitting low because they're, they're punching to the body, uh, Steve. Both have been guilty of that uh, penalty, and now Joe Cortez is beginning to lose patience. <laughs> nice maneuver there by Yonker to elude Mike McCallum. Look at these stretches of time where Yonker doesn't throw anything because McCallum is throwing something, exactly what Eddie Futch said. That's wisdom in the corner. Over 100 years of experience between the two. And they got Edwin Lewis, who uh, was an uh, excellent fighter and has been an excellent cornerman for many years now. So they got a lot of wisdom and calmness. Blood from the left nostril of Randall Yonker. Again, McCallum lining Yonker up, looking for the body. He's calm, though. He's not rushing in there. He wants to get that body. And he wants to go to the head if he can. Yeah, just for good measure. Nice you uppercut by McCallum. McCallum. Oh, nice low blow by Randall. Round four. Big point for Mike McCallum. So round four is in the books here at the MGM Grand. Let's go over to Bobby Chess standing by. Bobby. Thank you, Steve. We're here with Rick Rubis, the undisputed light heavyweight kickboxing champion. And different type of fight here tonight. You're not, uh, no one's using their feet. What brings you a fight like this? Well, I'm here to talk about the biggest fight in the sports history of kickboxing, PKA Karate Mania, March 26th, live pay-per-view. Well, that's a no, we know that's on Showtime on March 26th, Showtime event television, I stand corrected. And uh, John Eve Terrio, a formidable opponent, what can we expect from you there? Well, uh, I want the kickboxing world and all the fight fans to know that it's my time. It's in with the Jet Age, out with the Ice Age. It's time for the Iceman to be dethroned. It's time for the ice to melt, and I'm the man to do it. Well, what about regular boxing? I know my dad did some kickboxing karate, but I chose to do this. I was more comfortable without kicking. Uh, what made you lean toward kickboxing? Well, four limbs are better than two. I always got a big thrill of being able to get up and kick a guy in the head with a full force kick. All right. Thank you very much, Rick. We'll go back to ringside and Steve Albert and Freddy Pacheco. All right. Thanks very much, Bobby. As we enter round five, scheduled for 12, Randall Young. trouble. Yonker must have been given heck in the corner because he came out fighting and he had to because they've got to tell him exactly what Eddie Futch said in the other corner. You have got to be first or this guy's going to eat you up because McCallum has no mercy. 
He will come right at you. Big points at the end of that round when he cornered Randall Yonker and pummeled him in the corner. Mark McCallum, 45-2-1 with 34 knockouts. Randall Yonker, 29-2 with 23 knockouts. Yonker out of Mobile, Alabama. McCallum, Brooklyn, Kingston, Jamaica. He's been all over. McCallum is wearing out. Well, I'm sorry, McCallum is wearing out. <laughs> Randall Yonker. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, age is uh, being tested here, but it's a young age is being tested. I'm happy to be back with you, fellas. <laughs> you get kicked? No, I didn't get kicked, but I missed what I understand were two very exciting rounds. And, well, I tell you, from back where I was, I could hear the crowd going crazy. And by the looks of your scorecard, it's been all McCallum. Yeah, it has been all McCallum. And look out. Oh, there we go. fighter he's just a superior talent he has the age and experience in his corner and the age here didn't hurt him not a bit but you know what hurt experience hurt his experience was so superior to yonker he just didn't know how to handle all that was coming at him randall yonker showed me a great heart and he showed me a bobby ches like chin but i'll tell you i expected a little more from him. he was talking uh, a very good game in, in the dress room and also yesterday during the interviews i really expected more out of him a little more pressure a little more movement a better jab and i was a little disappointed in him. i'm sure he is but he, he took an awful lot of punishment hey bobby he was in there with a rolls royce that that man is the quality of boxing has been for years mike mccallum i mean and he's got a quality corner it just shows when all those pros get together it's hard to beat a guy like uh, mike mccallum even old and even a little heavy as he is now you don't become a three-time world champion because you're average you got it mccallum with a barrage putting this man away yonkers nose was bloodied at 115 of the fifth he was stunned at 135 he went down at 213 and it was stopped at 255 unofficially here in round number five. We'll get the official word from Jimmy Lennon Jr. momentarily, but what a ferocious attack by the body snatcher, Mr. Mike McKellum. <laughs> Hugs all around in McKellum's corner. His first fight of 1994. With Eddie Butt. Don't punch him too hard, Mike. A big hug for Joe Cortez. Let's get the official announcement right now from Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 2 minutes 55 seconds in round number 5. The referee in charge, Joe Cortez, stops the contest. Winner by way of technical knockout, the body snatcher, Mike McCallum. Let's take a look at where McCallum got Yonker in trouble at the beginning of the round. 
Well, it's the beginning of the round, and Yonker, again, to his credit, is trying, but it's just too, there's a big left hook counter. There's too much skill, too much artillery in McCallum's arsenal. He backs him up to the ropes, and he hits him with a left uppercut. It's coming up shortly, and it just really stuns it, and it starts to become the beginning of the end. Uh, we didn't get it on that shot. There was a shot where he pushed it in. He, as it's a little later on in the round, and certainly in the same combination, right on the nose, that's where a lot of the blood came from. That's what shocked him so badly, almost brought him to his knees. And even though, again, he's still trying, he's still trying to whip that look, left hook in, but Yonker just doesn't have the tools. And the knockdown, the mark of a great professional and a great champion. He's got him hurt to the head. He doesn't forget the body. He slips that left hook under. Bang! And there goes all the air in his body. And that is a very debilitating and terrible feeling, I can tell you from experience. Thousands of fans here at the MGM Grand Las Vegas just astounded.